Fosse Grimen. This creature is from the Scandinavian folklore and is very peculiar. It looks like a handsome young man completely nude and plays the fiddle under the waterfall. He doesn't disturb people nor does he help people unless angered or asked. He is a magnificent musician and would play his fiddle beautifully. His playing is so beautiful, it moves and enchants people's hearts, may it be a happy or sad song. He gets angry or annoyed if people played bad music near him, which would turn him into a terrifying monster instead. Now, because of his skills, there are stories of people asking him to teach them the fiddle, and he would gladly teach them as long as they give him food, especially meat. Apparently, the quality of his teaching differs greatly depending on the food he is given. If the meal or meat is inadequate, all he would teach is tuning or plucking. Vodianoi, a Slavic mythological creature that is specifically male. They inhabit rivers, ponds, and streams. It has a frog-like face with long greenish hair, a green beard that reaches its feet, round body which is usually covered in algae, and his skin is covered in black fish scales. It is believed to be a water spirit and has a tendency to be evil. Occasionally, the Vodjanoi are said to hide itself underwater, totally submerged, and has a beautiful flower right above it. The flower acts as a lure for people to come near and pick it. So when a person stepped in its range, it would drag that person into the water and two things could happen. The first one is death, and the second one, you would be taken to its magical water kingdom and forced to either marry him or become his slave for life. Or both. Now when he's not in a hunting mood, he is said to ride on a half-sunk log along his river, making loud splashes without a care in the world. Dwarku This creature inhabits the lakes of the British Isles. They resemble either an otter or a type of dogfish, which is as big as a crocodile, give or take seven feet long. They don't hesitate in attacking humans and could run as fast as horses when they want to. They are usually found in a group or at least in a pair, and when they are chasing, they always form a tag team, taking turns chasing until their prey is caught. When they feel threatened, they would give off an eerie high-pitched whistle or screech to warn their group. This creature seems to be a cryptid, but because there are no hard proof of its existence, they are a bit mystical just like the Loch Ness. But sightings have been reported as far back as 1684, but tales of the Dwarku seems to have been around for much longer. Now, they say that the Dwarku is extremely rare or maybe even extinct, but if there is a chance that they are alive, they should be found in Akil Island, west of County Mayo, in a lake named Srahin's Loch. Afank A lake monster from Welsh mythology. They would prey at anyone who swims or fall into its lake. They are described to look like a crocodile or a beaver, so we could assume it's big, hairy, with sharp teeth. They are said to be able to cause flooding whenever it thrashes violently, a bit like how the Namazu, which is a mythical giant catfish in Japanese folklore, which can cause earthquake whenever it becomes restless. There is one story of the Avang about a maiden who managed to get the creature to sleep on her lap. So while the Avang is sleeping, fellow villagers chained and bound the creature which probably woke it up and actually ended up killing the girl in the process when it was struggling to get free. Bunyip. It is a large creature from the Australian Aboriginal mythology where their natural habitat are the billabongs, swamps, and most freshwater sources of Australia. The stories of the Bunyip came from throughout Australia but with different names from different tribes and is known to be an evil spirit. Even the Europeans that came in the early to mid 19th century has a few written accounts of the Bunyip. Though most do try to rationalize it by saying it could be seals that stray inland. This might be true because, as we know today, seals have been found for even as far as 100 km away from the coast. But there are no consistent description on how the Bunyip looks like in folklore other than being big, scary, and dangerous. So here are some of its description. It has a dog-like face, dark fur, flippers, horns or tusks, and more. They would eat anything that comes near them, or near the water's edge. They would only appear at night, and of course, it has a blood-curdling shriek. So was it a cryptid, a spirit of the water, or a stray seal? 
It sounds a bit like the door ku to me, but who knows. Ech ushkia. They are vicious creatures and it is better to stay away from them rather than being fascinated. They are exactly like the Kelpie as mentioned in my Scottish mythological creature video in that they can shapeshift into either a handsome man or a beautiful horse or pony. What makes them different is not in their appearance, but the way they eat you. They live mostly in locks or the sea inlets of Scotland, and just like the Kelpie, they would be so majestic, people just want to try and ride it. By then, it would secrete an adhesive to make you stick on it with no chance of escaping, then it would drag you to the nearest body of water to drown you, where you can try killing it, but since you would be bound by the adhesive, it is almost impossible. Now once you drown, it would proceed in tearing your limbs apart, devouring everything except for your liver and some other internal organs which is left to float. As I said earlier, they are vicious, so if they get impatient, they would rather attack you straight on rather than seduce you. So stay away from strangers or horses or human-horse hybrids that you see alone near a body of water. Abaya from the Melanesian mythology, it is an eel-like monster that lives in the bottom of freshwater lakes in the Fiji, Solomon, and Vanuatu Islands. The abaya seems to be the guardian of the lake and considers everything in the lake to be under its care. Thus, anyone that even attempts to harm or disturb the lake will be killed by it. The abaya kills by causing terrible rainstorms that floods the village or area. One of its stories goes like this. One day... A man found a lake which has a lot of fish. He started fishing there and eventually caught a lot of fish from it. Little did he know that that lake was the home of the abaya. Happy, the man told his village of the bountiful lake. People went there the next day and started fishing. Apparently a woman managed to get hold of a huge eel, but the eel escaped with its strength and size. That eel was abaya himself. So Abaya got angry because his habitat has been disturbed and his underlings were caught. He retaliated by causing a great rain to fall that night, causing waters from the lake to rise and flooded the village, drowning everyone in it. The only person who survived to tell the tale was an old woman who didn't take part in fishing nor ate anything from the lake. <laughs>